hope. We're stoked, We're stoked you're here. here. We want to see, see how you're doing, doing church, church at home. At home. So if you so post, if you post on, social on social media, media make, sure make sure to tag, to tag your, photos. your photos. Hashtag, hashtag Hope, Hope Church, Church Fam. fam. Are you Are looking, you looking to, get to get connected? Drop by our website and introduce yourself at www.discoverhope.church. connect We'd like to invite you to attend Discover Growth and learn more about how you can discover your purpose and live the life God created for you. We know that there are a lot of people facing hard times right now, and we want to be able to support you through it. Let us know how we can pray for you. Email us at prayer at discoverhope.church. We'd like to say a special thank you to those who have donated to Hope to impact people in our community. Your financial generosity is changing lives. If you'd like to give to the mission of Hope, you can do so online at www. Dot discoverhope dot church slash donate or you can text any amount to 831 800 2060 thanks for tuning in with us we hope you'll enjoy the service Morning, church family how are you stand to your feet let's worship today mark check 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 I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? Come on, sing this out with me It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Come on church, sing it out Now your freedom is all I know. Listen, the old man knew. Hey. Jesus, when I met you, oh, what a day. When you, you called, called my name, name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that crack. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Come on, I want to hear every voice when we sing this. Sing it out. I need a rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, of the darkness into your glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that grave 
out of the darkness into your glorious day. beautiful name Jesus Jesus you were the word in the beginning we love you so much you 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 loved us before our mother even gave birth to us you shaped us into creation you have a plan for our lives Jesus your name is worthy of our praise we will build our lives upon your name come on church let's sing this together Yours is the kingdom, yours is the kingdom. 
presence today. We invite you in to this place to be near us, to be around us, to be everything to us. Let's just continue our worship this morning. We're going to sing a song called Reckless Love. I just want you guys to listen to these words. Believe these words and speak it into existence. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. It's been so good to us every day of our life. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. Yes, you did, God. You have been so, so kind to me. Come on, every voice, sing, oh, the overwhelming. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. God, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away, yes you do, oh, the overwhelming, never Reckless love of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Thank you, Jesus. You have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have, God. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. so so kind to me come on believe it today oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god oh it chases me down fights till i'm found please the 99 Oh, I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Lift your hands up. Let's sing this together. So shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. He's coming after us today. Snow wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Come on, every voice, sing it out. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming out to me. Believe it with all of your hearts today. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. 
coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me One more time There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me He's done it all for you There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Reason I deny I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it You give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love Sing that bridge one more time. Everybody lift their hands. We surrender it all to you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing. There's no shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. Believe it today. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't sit down, coming after me. Sing it again. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, coming after us. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie, you won't sit down, coming after me. Come on. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing it one more time. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, ever-ending, reckless love of God. Jesus. Thank you for your reckless love. Now in this song, we're not saying that Jesus is reckless, but his love is quite so. Amen. He's crazy for us. He loves us so much. He sent his son down to die on that cross for you. 
He was crucified on that cross. He didn't know you, but he knew you. You weren't in existence, but he had you in the back of his head. It's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. You're coming after me. It's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Amen, church. Can we lift up a shout of praise this morning? Can we give him praise? Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your reckless love. We thank you, Lord, that you love us. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, you said? Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. Announcements are coming out shortly. Hey, everybody. I'm Karen. I'm here to do a couple of announcements. Um, so did anybody watch the 49er game yesterday? Any fans out there? Okay, well, I, sorry, Packer fans, if they're any of you. Um, but, you know, um, I think we can all agree, whether whoever we um, were rooting for, that the Niners won because of teamwork, special teams. And you know what? We have special teams at the church, too. We just heard an outstanding special team here, the worship team. Let's give them a big shout. Yeah. <laughs> but there's lots of other opportunities to be volunteering in the back. We have our special team working on sound and visuals. Um, hooray. <laughs> We've got a prayer team. We've got the pancake team. Let's hear it for the pancake team. Yeah. The folks who are doing um, kids ministry, all of these guys are things that you can become involved with, and we need you on our special teams. So if you would like to be on a team and you aren't on one yet, there's a QR card in the back being shown that you can scan off your uh, phone and volunteer. Or you can fill out, you know, old-fashioned on the Connect cards, which are also at the back if you want to do that. Um, and if you'd like to give, which is also kind of a special team kind of thing, uh, there's a giving box in the back. You can give online, and you can also text any amount to 1-831-800-2060. And let's see. Um, oh, we also, because COVID's still around, uh, if you would like to be um, informed if there's been a COVID exposure, at church, you can do that by texting 831-288-3053, and I'm sure you won't remember that, so let me know if you <laughs> need that number later. Um, finally, we have on February 6th, and uh, that's two weekends from now, at 4 p.m., we're going to have a church block party here at the church. It's so much fun. If you haven't done it, come. You just come, you get some food, and it's, it's a great way to get to know other people. And finally, we are not dismissing kids just yet because we have a special child dedication. So off to Chad. Just passed. Check, check. All right. Come on, James. Yeah, I'll, I could, I mean, I could bless you too, man. No worries. We're all childs of God, huh? Oh, and we got our pancake right there. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Oh, I was saying that's, that's the kind of photo you see in the frame you buy, right? That's like just the perfect photo. Yeah, but. Blessing happy birthday, pancake. <laughs> Maybe another time, son. He loves the birthday song. He loves the birthday song. Um, but. This is, this is a, a really cool experience. Uh, this is my first time ever dedicating a child. So uh, this is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. And we, get to, um, we get to be a part of this as a church community, and we get to be a part of it as family, which is, uh, which is special. Um, I love the words of Joshua that says, for as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you as parents and as grandparents are making that choice right now to train this young man up in the ways of the Lord, that he will not um, 
he will not turn from it, that he will always know the truth. I believe that there is a, a, a truth that is embedded in our hearts that fills the gaps of, of our existence, and it happens at church, and it starts in our Sunday school. And so that's what we're doing to dedicate, is we are just making a commitment as a church family to you, the Bankies, and to James here. We're making a commitment to do our part and our best to be a part of your village and to help him know the love of Jesus and the community of believers. So that's our commitment here. And then on your side, you guys are making the commitment to, to him as parents to bring that, that gospel home, to bring that, that pillar of, and foundation of faith to his life. <laughs> even, when, even when he's 14 and doesn't want to go to church. Because um, we've all been there, huh? <laughs> when, it's, when, it's, uh, when there's a Niners game on and you don't want to go to church, you make it a priority because that's what... That's what we do as, as a community of faith and a community of believers who put Jesus at the center of our lives, in the center of our families, and that's what brings us all together. I, I believe if we put Jesus here, wherever we're at and we're going towards Jesus, we're all going to come together. We're all going to get closer. We're all going to be um, more in line and in sync. And so I just want to, um, as, a, as a church here, I want us to all admit and acknowledge that we are going to be the village here whether it's in the pancakes or it's in the, the kids' department, on the worship team, we're going to be the village that, that helps this young man know who Jesus is and know what faith looks like and know what true grace and truth can do in, in, to transform a life. So if you guys want to bow your heads, we're going to pray and we're going to, we're going to pray over the bankies and over James right now. Jesus, thank you so much for, for James. He is such a... Uh, a little ball of joy. He's so curious and so full of awe and wonder. Lord, and I, I believe you designed him that way. You created him with that flavor of curiosity. And he is he's an amazingly kind child, Lord, and I thank you for his parents and his, and his uh, extended family that's here today, that they would make that choice and they would make that declaration to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Lord, I pray that our church here would, would have the, the wisdom and the, the knowledge of how to love this, this young boy and how to show him the truth of the gospel and the love of Jesus as he grows and as he matures in his, in his physical body, his mental capacity, and his emotional qualities, Lord, that we would just be here to support, to love, and to come alongside this family to, to raise a beautiful young man. And Lord, we pray for the... We pray for the hard times, Lord, that you're there, you're there in, the, in the valleys, not just the mountaintops, Lord. And we bless James in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. And kids, you're all dismissed. All the kids can go. Yeah, that's for you. Yay, James. Yay. All right. Kids, we got, we got, uh, we got the kids program ready for you all. So if you guys want to go and... Um, Kids can be dismissed. Parents, you can take your kids there. Please don't forget your kids. We, have, um, we do have a policy where we can't keep them. So um, please pick them up. All right. Let that commotion die down. All right, so I know Karen already beat me to it, but that Niner game, I only saw the first, the beginning of like the first three quarters of the game. I missed the good stuff. I know, right? Like I, I went, I went onto the ESPN app after um, got the kids down, and I was like, wait, what? They pulled it off? They won? <laughs> I'm a Raider fan, so I can be a little shocked that the Niners did it. Yeah, go ahead. I know how to lose. I'm a, I'm a gracious loser. I'm a Raiders fan. That's, we know how to lose. Um, just ask the Raiders. But so I was a little shocked that they were able to pull that off in Lambeau. If it was in Santa Clara, hey, maybe you got a chance. But in Lambeau, really? Dang. That was a, that was a good win. That was a good win. But that's uh, neither here nor there because Raiders are out, so the season's over. <laughs> season's over, right? But um, so we, we are kind of 
not in a series right now. This, this message kind of goes along with what we've been doing in a series, but it's not a part of the series. It's just a, a little bridge message. But I hope, I hope you guys are, um, are open to hearing it, and I, and I pray that Jesus can speak through me to you. Um, I believe there's something in here for everyone, and I believe God can take any kind of mess and make it a message. So that's how I'm here today, is, uh, is just the grace of God. But I was in my devotions today, this morning, and something really jumped out at me, and it really struck me for today's message. So I want to start with something that's not on the screen. It's just here. It's in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 24 through 28. When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them all together and said, You know that the rulers of this world will lord over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give them his life as a ransom." It's just kind of backwards, right? It's kind of different than how we think. That doesn't line up with, with, I mean, anything in our society, anything in our culture, that you, like, to be of someone of importance and authority, you have to go under and submit, and you have to serve. That doesn't really make sense, does it? I mean, let's just take, I know a lot of us have a, a, a church background or a biblical mind, which is amazing. I want you to have that active as much as possible. But let's take that, let's pause that for a second and just go to our culture. Just go to our society. Just go to our, our human, our humanity. Does that make sense? That to be the leader, you have to be a slave. To be first, you should be last. Does that, it doesn't really make sense, Right? So we're going to be talking today from uh, this perspective, and I'm going to give you the three points. Don't worry. I'll give them to you now. I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you. That things are backwards. That things are upside down, and things are inside out from how humanity looks at life and how Jesus instructs life. Things are backwards. Things are upside down, and things are inside out. It doesn't make sense. It's like, who do we look up to, or who do, when you were growing up, who'd you look up to? Who was your role model? right? It's usually someone of some good social status. I mean, you're not putting a poster of, like, a slave on, on, your, on your wall, right? You're putting Michael Jordan up on your wall, right? You, I mean, we, we look at athletes. We look at the smart, the, the rich, the attractive, the talented, the gifted. We put those people up on a pedestal in our society. It's just kind of how humanity works, and it has worked for generations. Thousands of years have always Worked that way. We put, I mean, you got Elon Musk, Tom Brady, Tyra Banks, Bill Gates, just to name a few examples of who we look to. Now, I've never met any of these people, so I don't know their character. I don't know what their, what their intentions are like. I, I know what their public figure looks like. I know what their, their uh, PR manager is releasing. But I don't know who they are as a person, so why am I modeling after them? You know, we got to look at what Jesus says to model. We got to look at how Jesus acted and do what he did, if that makes sense. I mean, you even have people who, why are they famous? That we, like, can we just, elephant in the room, Kardashians? <laughs> you guys all knew I was going there, huh? How is Kim K so famous? Right? Famous for being famous. There's nothing, that's just how, it's so weird, right? That's how our, that's how humanity operates. Now, Jesus says other things. Jesus instructs us differently. Jesus calls us to a new standard, a new way of living that's not in line with where we naturally go. And we find this throughout all the, te- like, throughout the teachings of Jesus, we find that there is a big difference, a huge difference. And, you know, it's almost like have you ever been so lost that you just didn't know up from down? I'm, I, I used to surf. I don't really surf anymore, and I was never good. I was never good at surfing. But there's a couple times I thought I was better than I was and got in some big waves, and I got tumbled around. I didn't know up from down. I started swimming to the bottom of the ocean, right? You just get so lost. Or I was down in L.A. First mistake. I was down in L.A. 
and I was using Apple Maps, second mistake. Right, I love Apple, I'm an Apple guy, not their maps. Mm -mm. Don't like their maps. So I'm in LA using Apple Maps, trying to get from uh, the beaches to uh, my hotel in Anaheim. I was going down to Disneyland. And I pull up Apple Maps, and I'm cruising, and it's starting to get dark, and the sun is set, and I'm, and I'm driving, and I'm like, man, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm following the maps. I'm not, making a mis I'm not making a mistake. And I keep going, and I'm like, man, we should, this has been an hour. We should probably be there by now. This is, this is weird. And then I, I get on the maps, and I look at it, and it had me going the wrong way. It had me literally going, the wrong, going south rather than north. And it took me that way. It wasn't my, it was not user error. Now, I actually had a friend who worked in the, in the maps department at that time, and I called, it was, like, it was like 10.30 at night at this point, and I called him, I said, Jamie, I hate Apple Maps, and just hung up. And then he texted me back, would it lead you off a cliff? Because <laughs> he knows they're bad. Thankfully, they've gotten a little bit better over the last few years, but I was so lost, and I couldn't trust the source to lead me. Right, I couldn't trust my maps to lead me right. I had to stop, pull over, download Google Maps, and try that to get to my hotel. It was a huge mess. And I'm not the most patient person, and I don't deal with frustration that well. And so, yeah, there were some, some not-so-godly things that came out of me that day. And it was because I was lost. It's because I couldn't trust what I was being told. And our spiritual life, sometimes we get so lost in culture and we can't trust what they're telling us is right. We can't trust that we should look to Kim K. Can't trust that. It doesn't hold water. And we can be so lost in our culture, so lost in our society, and so conflicted from our soul to our head that we don't know up from down. And we're following Apple Maps when really... We need to follow the instructions of God. See, if I would have just had the right source, I wouldn't have been lost. If I just had the right source, the right directions, I would have saved myself time, energy, frustration. I would have been so much better off had I just known where to go. Does that make sense? Is that landed for anyone? Anyone ever been that lost? I, okay. Another time, this is a fun one for me because it's the, the eggs on my face not on Apple Maps. I was 16 years old, came over from Gilroy, and I was going up to uh, Steamer Lane. And I don't know my way around Santa Cruz. 16, never driven over here. I get, you know where the bowling alley is right by the boardwalk? And it's a one-way? <laughs> I went right. <laughs> and people are honking and swerving. I'm like, what's going on? They are really not nice here in Santa, oh. I'm going, I was going the wrong way on a one-way. Because I didn't read the signs. I didn't, see, I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. I was just going with the flow. I was just on autopilot mode. Let me tell you, if our spiritual walk is in autopilot, we're going to miss very important signs. We're not going to see what we need to see. And the enemy is going to take advantage of that. If you're in autopilot, if you're not on high alert, you're going to go the wrong way on a one way. And it's going to get dangerous. I'm just lucky I made it here. And so that brings us to our first point. It's backwards. Things are backwards when you follow Jesus. When you take on the, the methodology of heaven, it's backwards to the way humanities operate. Right? And I love this quote, one of my favorite, Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. That's how we think. If you ain't first... You're last. I can start quoting that movie so much. I'm showing so much self-control right now, guys. You have no idea how much I just want to go full Ricky Bobby. Hey, pound baby Jesus. <laughs> but no, Ricky, if, I mean, isn't that how we work in our, in our businesses, in our jobs, in our, in our scholastics? If you aren't first, you're last. We only honor first place. Second place is just the first loser. I mean... That's just kind of how, how life goes. Gold medal, right? At least the bronze and dim lighting kind of looks gold, so you can lie, right? Silver, you know, you're second. You're not, you're, you're so close. 
one tenth of a second off, and you will forever be number two. Right? If you aren't first, you're last. Luke 13.30 says this, and this is in the Passion Translation, which I've, I've really come to like, but, and take note of this. Some are despised and viewed as less important now, but one day the master will place them at the head of the line. And some of whom you view as elite today will become the least important then. That sounds backwards to if you ain't first, you're last. That sounds like whoever was last just won. Sounds like the person who had the, the smallest title was looked at as the most important. You see, there's so many people that go into a race team. I have a friend who's on a race team. He's in the pit crew. There is so much that goes on behind the scenes for that one driver, that one driver to get recognized. They don't recognize the crew. Sometimes a good driver will acknowledge the crew. But whose name's in the record book? Not, not the dozens of people that helped that driver get there, right? It's a little backwards when Jesus says, those who you think of as elite will be last. Well, they'll be at the back of the line. They won't be honored. But those who you think are, are less than today, oh, I see them as so important. It's interesting. And see, this Luke's, in Luke, this is on the heels of Jesus confronting the notion that being around God is enough rather than being submitted to God. He's kind of calling out these, these, uh, these spiritually dead Pharisees that are, well, oh, I'm, around, I'm around church. I hung out with God. I was around. I was there. I saw it happen. But they weren't submitted. They weren't following. They weren't serving. They weren't engaged in what Jesus was calling them to. So being around God is much different than being submitted to God. So that, and then Matthew 20 says it, says it like this. It's very similar. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Now, this similar outlook is on the heels of a parable from vineyard workers. So there's, there's this vi uh, parable that Jesus is telling where this vineyard worker, this vineyard owner, needed some workers for the harvest. And so he went to the market and hired some, some day laborers all day. And then he went back at lunch, and there were still some people that needed some work, so he hired them as well. And then lastly, at the end of the day, he went and hired some workers for just the, the final hour. And he paid the, the last workers first and gave them a full day's wage for one hour's work. And so the people who had been there longer were like, oh, it's big payday. Let's go. If those guys are getting that much money for one hour, doing the math, I'm going to make a lot of money today. And then he gives them all the same. And the people who had served all day were not happy about that. I mean, let's get real. Would you be happy about that? If you worked eight hours, I worked one hour, and we got paid the same? <laughs> no. But the point of the parable is the blessing of heaven and the gift of eternal life. There's no, there's no amount to it. It's if you've served me from day one or you served me from the, the last moments of your life, you get the same reward. And so the first will be last and last will be, it just doesn't make sense. It boggles my mind. But when I get into the, the teachings and the actions of Jesus, I see it as he stoops down and washes the disciples' feet. That doesn't make sense that the Messiah, the Son of God, is cleaning the feet of fishermen. But it makes sense to Jesus because he understands that to show Love is to serve others. And that's what God came to do, is to love us. God so loved the world. It's not God so owned the world. He does. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But God so loved the world that he would come down and he would serve us. It's just, it changes, it changes things. I had a coworker at Pete's Coffee when I was in college. I worked at Pete's in Saratoga. And we were friends. Like, I had just started a few while, uh, for a little, I'd only been working there for a little bit. And me and this um, coworker, we were friends. We had a good little connection going on. She was kind of like, um, she had a cool hippie vibe going. She had dreadlocks and stuff. I was like, yeah, right on. You know, we could be, we could be friends. And one day she, like, started getting super mad at me. And I 
I was like, what is going on? I, I had not said anything. I had not done anything. I haven't been here long enough for you to hear me say or do anything. Like, you just one day turned into, like, not liking me. And so I confronted her, and I said, what's going on? Like, did I do something? Did I make a mistake? Like, and she found out that I was making more money than her. And she thought, I've been here a year longer than you. I'm training you. This is backwards. I should be making more money than you. And I looked at her. I said, well, you know that part on the um, application where it said, how much do you want to be paid? What would you write? She said, minimum. So you make minimum. They're not going to give you a raise. You write minimum wage. They're going to pay you minimum wage. I wrote over minimum wage. And then we negotiated to a place where I was comfortable. But she was mad at me because she thought it was backwards. And it didn't make sense to her that I would be making more money than her. Now we talked about it, and she kind of ended up realizing that it wasn't my fault. And then we were great friends for the next four years. It was awesome. But sometimes uh, the way we see things is backwards is like, I deserve this. I should have this because I've, I've been going to church for 30 years. I should have this by now. I should be asked to do this. I should have that role. I should have that title. Maybe. Or maybe you, you don't have something because you haven't asked for it. See, it's a, it's, it's the backward system of God is, is hard for us to, to really start to operate in because it's counterintuitive to us. And that, to me, says a little bit about our surrender and our submission to God because if we keep gravitating towards our way of thinking, we're not thinking the way God wants us to. We're putting ourselves up on that pedestal and saying, my logic and reasoning is good enough. That's where it should be. We're telling God how to God, and I don't think that's going to work well. If you tell God how to God, it's not going to go well for you. And our second point is that it's upside down. It's upside down. This upside down kingdom, right? It's like the Warriors. I love the Warriors. Let's go. Steph Curry, strength in numbers. I love that, and I love that, that, that catchphrase that they have, strength in numbers for the Warriors, because they have such a deep bench that they can put anyone in rotation because they have a good system. You see, it's not just the players. It's the, the coaches, the structure, and the system that makes these players better. And so they can put any player in at any given moment, any time, and still score. They can still be competitive with their, with their, with their you know, D-League coming up. They can still be competitive because of their system. Right? And how these other teams haven't caught on that one superstar or two superstars or three superstars doesn't make you a good team. Hello, Lakers. <laughs> like, just because you have AD and LeBron and doesn't mean you're going to be good because they don't know how to play as a team. They don't know how to play as a team. But see, we say strength in numbers, which makes sense, right? The bigger army wins. No? Does that make sense? The bigger, the bigger number wins. Blackjack, 21 wins, right? The only thing golf, hey, hey, golf's a pure sport. Lower number wins, golf's a pure sport. 13 was better than 10 yesterday. Strength in numbers. But see, Paul in 2 Corinthians 12.10 says it this way. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Anyone else put a question mark on that? I did. When I'm weak, then I'm strong? What? That doesn't make sense. How does... I think it's just an invitation to let God fill the gaps. If we let God fill the gaps of our... our inabilities or our deficiencies or our, you know, not so goods. Sometimes I'm not so good at some stuff. I, I'm a jack of all trades, but I'm a master of none, right? I'm not great at anything. I can do a lot of little things pretty well, but it's, I've found it, it's in my weaknesses that God has this opportunity to show up because I've found that when I'm operating in a strength of mine, I kind of go, don't worry about it, God. Let me show off for a second. I got you. I kind of put my arm back on God. Anyone, is that just me? Like, you, does anyone else put their arm back on God? 
Like when it's in your, in your gifting, in your wheelhouse, you're just like, I know what to do. I'm not even going to go to God about how to do this. I'm just going to do it because I know what to do. And I'm just going to tell God, rest up. I got this. How arrogant can we be? You see, it's upside down for us to think this way because we believe that our strengths are what validate us. We believe that we are recognized and are of worth because of what we can do. God is telling us that it's who we are, not what we do that validates us, that gives us merit, that makes us worthy. You think Jesus would have to die for something other than who you are? The who of you is far greater than the what of you. And Jesus knows that. And so he sees our weaknesses as our invitations to surrender and say, God, I need your help. God, I can't do this without you. And he goes, that's exactly where I need you to be because that's exactly where I can come. I can be there for you when you invite me into this. One of the best prayers I've ever prayed in my life is so short. God, get me out of the way. It's one of the best prayers I've ever prayed in my life. God, get me out of the way. Because when I get in the way, I just kink the hose so many times. And then I go to the faucet, I'm like, why is there no water? Oh, it's because I'm in the way. So I pray that our weaknesses are just where God shows up. And that we start to see that even our strengths compared to God are weak. God's given you some gifts. He's given you some talents. But you could be the best human at anything. You could be the goat. Still human. God's better. Let his, let his strength come in and support you. Don't be so afraid of looking like a failure that you, that you stiff arm God. <laughs> Let's humble ourselves and open our hands and say, God, help me. God, help me. This is one of my favorite points from the inside out because I think that this really, really changes our, our perspective because it's on God now. See, God does the heavy lifting. Jesus died for your sins. And so from the inside out, we don't have to just have behavior modification where we try to self-help and do better, right? But we can allow Jesus to transform our heart, which then transforms our thinking, which then transforms our actions. See, transformation will always overflow. Behavior modification will always run dry. So we say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? The evil queen, Snow White? Let's go. She had that mirror. She cared about only how pretty she was. She only cared about the external from the outside in. If I can be the most beautiful, then people will think I'm the best. It breaks my heart. Like I've seen youth students, and I'm sure adults now, but when I first came into um, understanding of it, it was um, youth students had these apps on their phone that they could take a picture or a selfie and then basically just Photoshop what they didn't like about themselves before they posted it on social media. It broke my heart when I saw these, these young women ridiculing themselves and creating horrible outlooks on themselves because they thought they had to be this certain way. They had to look this certain way. They were looking into a mirror of sorts and saying, can I just be pretty enough? And it's heartbreaking when we think that way that we, we are so consumed with what brand is on our shirt, or we're so consumed with what filter we have to make us look better, that the bag's under my eyes because I didn't get a lot of sleep last night because the anxiety and the depression is killing me inside. Can I get a filter that can take that away so people don't know that I'm hurting? We're so consumed with how we look, how we have this appearance now, I'm all for putting yourself together. I'm all for combing your hair. I'm all for looking your best. But not at the price of, of your soul and not being helped. I'm not all for that. I'm not all for us covering and consuming so much about our exterior that we won't go to people and say, I'm hurting and I need help. That's where it becomes toxic. And what's, what's really funny, the evil queen ended up becoming, I'd say she, she looked like the inside of her heart, 
when she had that apple to go give to Snow White. That picture right there. That's probably what her inside looked like. It's probably what her personality was like, what her soul looked like. I think so many times we're so consumed with what, how, we, how we're interpreted and how we lurk, look that we aren't willing to really do the work and go to Jesus and let him transform us from the inside out. Matthew 23, 25 through 26 says, What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and selfish indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. Can we just pause for a second and just take a, a realistic approach at that? If you were doing the dishes, and you, came, or, or you were coming over to my house, and I was doing the dishes, and I was only cleaning the outside, I mean, I have a two-year-old. Do you think the inside of that cup's clean? Uh-uh, backwash central. Or, I mean, the, 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 where, what you're going to eat off of wasn't clean. What you're going to drink out of wasn't cleaned, but the handle was clean. Would you want to come over to my house for lunch again? Probably not. I, I, probably, I, uh, uh, mm -mm. I just turned my own stomach. Oh, gosh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I just, but no, that's, that's, that's what we do in our lives, guys, girls. That's what we do. We put on this, the fake smile. We, we put uh, uh, on this facade, this mask, this presence that we are, got it all together. I don't need help. Don't worry, I'm doing just fine. And inside, we're just terrified, hurting, lost, lonely. But once Jesus gets a handle on our heart, and he handles it with care, he's not just going to come in and kick the doors down. He's a gentleman. He knocks and waits for you to answer. Once he starts to show you how valuable you are and how much you're loved and, and cares for you and, and, and helps you see that maybe if I stopped doing this tendency that I have in my life, I'll, I'll feel more secure, more at home, more at peace. When I stop letting negative thoughts rule my mind, maybe just then I'll start having a positive outlook. And he will help you, he will work with you, and he will love you through the process from the inside out. Because if he can get to your heart, he'll get to your head, and from your head, he'll get to your hands. We want to do stuff with our hands first and hope it changes our heart. It won't. It won't. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you right now, it never will. It might make you feel good for a minute, but it won't ever heal you. Only Jesus can heal you. Romans 12, 2 says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of your culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. You want to have a life that's satisfying and perfect? Let God transform you. Let God teach you how to think. Let him renew your mind. Let him create in you a new heart. Let him in, and your life will become satisfying, fulfilling, full of joy, purpose, can you imagine a life full of purpose where you wake up every day and you say, I'm excited to do life today. You're excited about it. That only comes from an inward transformation. Only comes from Jesus getting a place to dwell in your heart. And Jesus knows that. Jesus knows that. He knows that the best way for you to be clean is to start from the inside out. He knows he knows that when we flip our thinking upside down is when we start to see things right side up. You see, the, the fall of man, the, the sin, that's what turned the, turned the system upside down. It was always supposed to be the other way around. It was us that turned the dial. And sometimes the best place to be is last. If you want to bow your heads with me. Jesus, thank you so much that
that your way is, is above our way, that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, that your system is the right way, Jesus. I pray that we all understand that backwards to us is, is the proper way to you and that what we see is upside down. We're the, we're the ones who are wrong, Lord. And I pray that our hearts would be open to let you in so that you can transform us, that you can renew our thinking, Lord, that we can see things through your perspective. And I want to give a moment right now with every head bowed and eyes closed that if you haven't declared Jesus as your Savior or as the Lord of your life and you want to see things from a different perspective, you want to let Jesus in right now, I want to give you a moment to, to respond to that. Just a slip of your hand up, a look at me with your eyes, and we will pray with you. Amen, yes, amen. We will pray with you. And, and all, that, all we're simply doing is saying, Jesus, I can't do this without you. I am weak. Help me be strong. It's as easy as ABC that we acknowledge that we're a sinner in need of a Savior. We believe that that Savior is Jesus Christ who died on the cross, rose from the dead, and saved us from our sin. And then we commit our life to follow him and to live the way he lived and to let him be our role model instead of what society tells us to be. It's as simple as that. And we're here as a community to, to support you and come alongside you in this amazing decision that you've made. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to respond in one more song with the band, and then we have uh, prayer in the back corner with Kara if you'd like some, some personal prayer. And uh, if you guys want to stand with us, and we'll, we'll worship. Amen. Now this one's an oldie, but it's a goodie. This one's called From the Inside Out. Come on, church, let's sing together. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all things.
Come on, sing in my heart. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out, everlasting. Your light will shine when no else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame, and the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul. Cries out from the inside out, Lord, my soul. Cries out from the inside out, Lord, my soul. My heart and my soul, Lord, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Amen, church. Lift up a shout of praise today. Amen. We love you, Jesus. Consume us from the inside out. Well, thank you guys for joining us. You guys are dismissed. We will see you next week.